Hi, my name is Donya Palenker. I'm a Senior Health Policy Advisor with the National Women's Law Center, and today I'm going to talk with you about the economics of the Women's Preventive Health Services. Under a provision in the health care law, new health insurance plans will start providing certain women's health preventive health services with no cost sharing as of August 1st. And among the multiple services are access to an annual wellness visit and to birth control. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what this means and what the impact is on the household and the budget. See, a lot of people have been talking about it as just $10 a month. And what they really mean by that is, oh, people can just get access to birth control with a $10 copay, and it's really not all that much. So why do we have to have all of this provided with no cost sharing? But the truth is, it's more than $10 a month, and I want to walk that through with you today. So there are some women who have health insurance that covers generic drugs with a $10 copay. So for that type of a woman, she may actually be able to get her birth control pill for $10 a month. And for $20 a year, it perhaps, is her copay for her doctor visit. So she's only paying $140 a year for her birth control. But a lot of women are paying more. So let's think of a situation of a woman who, with her doctor, has determined that she needs to take a brand name drug. There's no generic available. And perhaps her copay for brands is $30 a month. So now you're hooking at $30 a month plus $20 for the doctor visit, and you're up to $380 a year. But we're not stopping there, because a lot of women have deductibles on their health insurance plans. And a deductible is the amount you have to pay towards health care before the insurance pays anything. And while there are some deductibles that don't apply to the prescription drugs, which would mean you can get the prescription drug even if you haven't met the deductible, and there's some deductibles that don't apply to something like your annual wellness visit, there are also plans right now that have deductibles applying to everything. So let's imagine a woman who's in that situation. Perhaps her birth control pill costs, costs $55 a month, so she's paying $55 a month. She's paying the full cost of that doctor visit, and she's paying $790 a year to access birth control. And what does that mean for a family? Let's imagine and compare that $790 to certain basic costs for a family of four living in Columbus, Ohio. That $790 could be used to pay for the cost of housing for a month, food for a month, or child care for one of their children. So it's a lot more than $10 a month. And when you look at it over a lifetime, it adds up to thousands. For a woman who's just turning 18, the cost of birth control over her life, if she has health insurance and we don't look at the new free pr provision that will provide it with no cost sharing, would be paying $12,000 over her lifetime. And if she didn't have health insurance paying towards it, she would be paying over $66,000 over her lifetime to get access to birth control. That $66,000, that's more than the average income in the United States. It's more than three years at a public college. It's more than going to the tuition of a public law school. It's more than buying a hybrid car, and it's more than a down payment on a house in the average house price in Scranton, Pennsylvania. So what we're looking at is birth control, which really is something that women need to be able to help make the decisions and the choices of when they're going to have a family so that they can go to school first, can have, be able to afford that down payment if they feel that they need to do that for their family first. And those costs are so high, but as of August 1st, because of the new health care law, those costs should start coming down, should come down when people should have access to those services without cost sharing. So to learn more, visit us at www.nwlc.org. And thanks for watching.